This is the uh, I Know Jack competition 2014 at the uh, Jack Daniels World Invitational Barbecue Contest. In the box for the I Know Jack is apple sautéed in butter, sugar, Tennessee red, one dozen eggs, one pound of flour, two sticks of butter, one half gallon of milk, one small bottle of water, one sweet pepper, one mock filet, one small package of bacon, salt and pepper, four apples, one half pound of sugar, one sweet onion, one package of tater tots, one loaf of bread, one small package of honey, one small powder sugar, one small pancake syrup, and one small box of pancake mix. With bacon and pepper hash browns. That's what we're doing right now. Okay. Steak and egg, steak and egg, open face sandwich, uh, hash browns with bacon and pepper onions. Uh, well, I guess what we're going to try to do here is this apple recipe. We're going to try to make us some French toast over here. And, uh, Put this apple butter, cinnamon, and all that good stuff cooked down and pour over the top of it. And then uh, what we're going to do is keep it simple. And we're going to make a pan-fried tenderloin, uh, some potatoes, smothered potatoes and stuff, and put a nice good couple eggs on top of it with the yolk so you can pop and let it run and let the high go with the hair. Keep it simple, not try to complicate it. Hopefully they'll like it. So, all righty. I talk to the camera? All right. All right. Hi, it's uh, Brian and Kelly from Good Smoke Barbecue, Rochester, New York, and uh, we're going to be cooking uh, a little French toast, and we're going to put on top of that a nice little uh, over easy egg, and then we're going to put some uh, medallions of the uh, smoked uh, tenderloin, uh, and then we'll put a little bit of apple uh, compote with the uh, delicious Jack Daniel's Tennessee Fire. So. I think that's it. Okay, guys, we're going to do chicken and flat waffles. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Fire Dancer Barbecue from Bryan, Arkansas. We're going to do chicken and flat waffles with a tater tot hash and a bacon wrapped pork surprise that's going to be glazed with uh, Jack Daniels fire and honey. Should be good. We'll see. Team Barbecue from South Africa, very, very uh, uh, excited to be here. Um, got a couple of nice ingredients here, and uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the the Hungry Jack mix, and we're going to herb it up. We've brought some fresh herbs along as one of our ingredients, and the other ingredient that we brought along was a uh, a relish that we make at home. And uh, thank you. And um, we have to start cooking now. Got a couple of stuff. We're going to wrap one of the loins in bacon. The other one we're going to do uh, normal cutlets and, and fry them off. Garnish it up a bit. Let's see how it goes well. judging I don't know Jack and um, everything was really good they had some really good ingredients and they were really creative the, the first couple teams actually kind of went along the same thing stacking their deals um, breakfast kind of theme deal um, and then the last two came in a little more savory breakfasty kind of deal so overall I think it was a really good presentation and uh, some pretty good cooking for you know, you have an hour to come up with something you don't know what you're doing. It's a pretty good deal. Um, nothing was bad, so everything was a whole lot better than just average. Okay. Tell you what, it's amazing when you see people who give them, who are all given the same ingredients, and we had five completely different dishes. They were all delicious. There were there were a couple better than others, but absolutely amazing and I love the originality I think that that was the most unique part of the whole thing was just what everybody does taking some basic ingredients adding their own signature they're putting their own stamp to it and then the flavors how they varied from dish to dish it was great what a wonderful experience I loved this I absolutely loved it
Mm. Well, I have to agree with them. I think it was, uh, everything was delicious. There was a lot of different takes on um, the apples. They were all done the same, but tasted a little bit different. So I, it was interesting to see the preparation that made the difference. Um, I'm just proud to be here again representing our family from with my father doing this years ago, Tony Stone. And so I'm sure he's, he's happy to see all this going on and continuing today. Uh, you know, I hate to be uh, repetitive, but it's as other people said. I mean, you know, there wasn't any bad. There are some that were better than others, but it's it really is incredible just to see the different people's, uh, their own take on it and how they get uh, through those same ingredients and everybody puts their own spin. And that's what you have to appreciate. Well, they've said it all, but uh, in addition to agreeing with them, one thing that surprised me I didn't expect to, to get a good flavor from anything with this and they, they astonished me everything was good you, you could taste just a kiss of this uh, jack fire it was fun visiting with each other and comparing notes afterwards as they said there was nothing bad that was put on our plate I saw the biggest variation in tenderness I if, it, if I can cut it with a fork it's tender and I only had to use my knife twice. So other than that, originality, taking the same ingredients and, and doing a different thing with it, I'm impressed. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Barbecue Hill. Tonight we're going to be serving some good old southern fried chicken, green beans with some shallots. We've got mashed potatoes, uh, Jack Daniel fried apples, some homemade yeast rolls, and everybody's favorite Jack Daniel double chocolate brownies. Hope everyone's coming to eat with us. Um, I'm Big Jim from Bare Knuckles Barbecue. Tonight we're going to do something a little different. We're going to deep fry some duck egg rolls and some venison egg rolls. They're made with a cabbage, shredded cabbage, Asian slaw with apples and sesame seeds and peppers. Uh, we're going to complement those with plum sauce, sweet chili sauce, and a teriyaki sauce. When we're all done with that, we're going to change gears completely and we're going to do some churros. And on the churros, we're going to have cinnamon and sugar and we've infused locally made honey with the Jack Daniels Fire to make a cinnamon sauce to go on top of the churros. Uh, should be entertaining and delicious. We got, we got some beautiful lamb chops on the grill over here. Over here, you're not over here. <laughs> Very simple, a little bit of oregano, little lemon, lots of love, Canadian love. And in this one we're doing some boneless lamb legs. Nice little bit of tzatziki on the outside. Lots of love, Canadian love. All for the jack. How many people are you going to feed, you think? I'm hoping to get at least 900 to 1,000. Thanks to Primo. Best girl in the world. Anything else you want?
Okay. I'm like, we got plenty of time. <laughs> Coming through. Yeah, it's just the beginning of the time, so we got 10 minutes. Which way you want to go? Okay. Huh? I'm recording you. <laughs> Where'd you get those? <laughs> Box coming through. Excuse us. Excuse us. Coming through. Coming through. Coming through. Excuse us. Box coming through. Excuse us. Excuse us, right behind you. All the way through, please. All right. We're gonna get out of the way. Hi, this is Pat Burke, uh, Murfreesboro, Illinois. I had to take the first one out. I, I thought it was the best one. Thank you. Anytime. Uh, Kelly Wirtz, uh, Great Bend, Kansas. Uh, we're at the Jack Daniels World Invitational Barbecue Contest, judging sauce today, uh, right now. Uh, some good entries. Um, just looking for a little bit more depth in some of those sauces. Um, the nice consistency on them. Um, otherwise than that, pretty good. Hi. Okay. What do you want? Perfect. You ready? Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly Sutton. I host a show called Inside Music Row on Zeus TV. We're in 40 million households, and this is my 11th year that I have been at this incredible competition. I love the sauce category. This is what I started off judging years and years ago. So this is one of my favorites. Uh, we had a couple entries that I think were very good consistency-wise. A little bit of spice in here that I thought was a little over the top with a few of them, but uh, there are a couple that I would like to bottle up and take home. How we doing? Dave Danielson, I'm the chef at Churchill Downs up in Louisville. Came down here, this is my first ever uh, Jack Championships. Here we're judging some sauces. Uh, really great to see just the different flavors between some sweetness, some tart, some tangy, all the different combinations and textures. Uh, starts off great, I'm looking forward to a great day of tasting some amazing barbecue. I'm executive chef Michael Osborne, and this is my 14th time at the Jack Daniels Invitational Barbecue. The barbecue sauce was fantastic. Lynchburg might be a dry county, but I promise you there was some good stuff in those sauces. I'm having a great day. Hope you are too. What do you want? Stay back. Okay. Just don't use his name. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Mark Carlton, first time barbecue judge here at the Jack. Really enjoyed myself. Had some great sauces, some nice uh, little hit of vinegar here and there. Pretty good and sweet, uh, and definitely, definitely some tasty Jack Daniels in there. Thank y'all very much.
I'm Jim Chab here here at uh, Jack Daniels, and uh, we're testing the uh, grading the foreign dishes that came in. We had three entries. Uh, they were beautiful to look at, very nicely done. Uh, I can only say though that the the taste was mediocre to good, and not quite up to the way they looked. Michael McDermott. You know, I love the appearance on all three. It did have a little bit of the, the meat on this particular uh, entry, had a little bit of a texture issue. Flavors were a little brand, bland across the board, but uh, otherwise, fantastic entries. Yeah, um, yeah, they all look good, but I think cream cheese and beef together is always questionable, questionable selection. Uh, and then, I was actually really surprised to see the pasta, but it was good. It tasted good. Yeah, hi, uh, Denny Mike Sherman from the great state of Maine. Um, I thought these were very creative dishes. Um, you know, I'm giving these guys credit for uh, it's a very nice culinary effort. I believe that uh, the first entry was uh, uh, my preferred. It had uh, very nice flavor and. Um, I think the second one was a little bit lacking in flavor. It was a little bit uh, kind of middle of the road. And uh, the, um, the uh, pasta was uh, actually quite good. Uh, I felt that, uh, uh, as Daniel said, it seemed a little out of place, but it was very good. And overall, I think these guys did a fabulous job. Yeah, I thought the presentation of all of them was very impressive and creative. I, I definitely preferred the taste and presentation of the first one, especially the meat. It had a lot of flavour. Um, the middle one was an unusual combination with goat's cheese and meat. I haven't had that before. Um, and it was on the on the tough side, um, so it wasn't my preferred choice. But the, the other one was also a bit unusual, sort of an Italian mix with traditional barbecue in it. The pasta was good, but perhaps a bit overcooked for my liking. Hi, Brent Dykes here for my third year representing Honda Generators, one of the sponsors, and we're honored to be here. Uh, the entries were fantastic. Uh, the presentation was great. Uh, the first entry with uh, the small uh, medallions of filet were some of the best tasting filet I've ever had. Uh, the little miniature loaded potato was fantastic. Um, the second entry with uh, the filet pinwheel with goat cheese in it, uh, you have to have an acquired taste for goat cheese, but it was really delicious, fabulous. Uh, the third one with the pasta and, uh, and the beef on top of it, it was a really good entry. And overall, it was uh, a fantastic category, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I'm Mike Mills from Murfreesboro, Illinois, here judging the chicken category at Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels Cook-Off Invitational. You know, um, it's pretty incredible. We have seven entries here, and as you can well see all by the entries here, they're all beautiful in appearance. The main part of it that comes in is the difference in the texture you know, the tenderness uh, of each piece of meat and, of course, the flavor profile. Uh, I'm going to tell you that any one of these uh, chicken thighs that you happen to see here, you'd be very happy to have on your table and eat. But when you go through and taste each one, there's a little bit of difference in the flavor profile. And that's really what it's all about is the flavor 
that you'll remember and something that hits your taste buds. Uh, they're very incredible. Out of these right here, I would have been proud to be able to produce any one of them. But if I was really going to take my rethers on it, it's going to be between these two right down here. Would be the ones that I'd rather have uh, and put my name on. But I'd be proud to cook any of them. Mike, what a great way to say these others aren't any good. <laughs> That's classy. I've got to learn that. Doggone it. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. But you can see, like Mike said, every one of these, as a cook mainly instead of a judge, I try to get my skin bite through. And every one of our entries, all seven of them, had bite through skin, which is really incredible that that many different cooks could get the skin to be able to be bite through. But there are textural differences. There's a uh, heavy rub here, a little more sauce here, and it's uh, definitely a flavor profile that you, um, some of them kind of overdid a little bit and some of them kind of underdid a little bit. So, uh, you want to pass the mic? Who you are, where we are, and what you eat. My name is Seth Reisner. Um, we are at the Jack, and this is a chicken category. And uh, with judging for a while and uh, doing our, doing actually competing, um, I would be very, very uh, happy to be able to turn any of these um, pieces of chicken. Um, the everything had a very good tenderness. There was a great sweetness and afterbite, a little heat, and uh, overall, uh, it was definitely a, a going well with a barbecue with a chicken. Hi, my name's, my name's Chris Chamberlain. I'm from Nashville. I'm here at the Jack Barbecue Invitational Championships, and we just judged the chicken category. And it was a fine lot of chicken, I have to say. Um, I'm really impressed by the way they're able to keep the white meat so juicy, but still manage to introduce some smoke to it. And uh, the ones, my favorites were the ones that didn't have quite as much sauce glopped on them. I like it when you can let the spice and let the chicken come through. Hi, my name's Nick Stumblefield, and I'm out of Nashville, Tennessee. The one thing I have to say about the chicken round is it's hard to go anywhere else to have it again. It is the juiciest, well-rounded, flavored chicken I think I've ever had. And I'm Robert Reeves from Huntsville, Alabama. This is my 22nd year to judge at the Jack. And I got to tell you, in 22 years, I think this is the best overall chicken that we've ever had. Uh, a lot of good heat to it and, and overall out. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Ron Childers from Memphis, Tennessee, my ninth year at the Jack. I'm very happy this year, by the way, to be the featured judge. I got my picture in the book and everything. It was kind of cool. And I got a great parking spot. But I got to tell you, this year has been awesome. We had a wonderful chicken division earlier, but we just finished up ribs. I had six incredible ribs. And, you know, there were a couple of them on there that were just cooked perfectly. I think uh, I, I had two of my favorite uh, entries cooked perfectly, the flavor profile was excellent, great smoke ring, and taking my buddy Jim Stansel's advice, you can see I only took two bites of each one because I'm pacing myself. I'm pacing myself. All right. Okay, I'm Lisa Maxwell from Cookville, Tennessee, and I am also the niece of Tony Stone. Uh, we are having a great time here at the Jack Daniels Cook-Off. The food is absolutely wonderful. Gary Prater, um, judging here at the Jack. Just got through eating some uh, pork. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. We had some good ribs. We had some fire chicken. Looking forward to the brisket. Thank you. Hardy Davis. We, as Gary said, we just judged the pork. A lot of good pork there. A lot of very, a lot of variations in flavors. I, this is my 25th year. Out of 26, yep. They wouldn't let me in the first year, but, no. but I'm always glad to be here. The, the quality is fantastic. Um, some of those ribs, well, I wanted to eat the whole thing, but we had, you had to pace yourself. Same with the chicken. A couple of the pork entries were exceptional. But, uh, it's great. Becky Johnson from Evansville, Indiana. And as the gentleman before me said, everything was uh, pretty on spot, most of it. Uh, there were a few things that uh, could have been better, but isn't that in everything, so. What am I saying? I'm James Newsom. We're in Lynchburg, Tennessee, eating some delicious barbecue on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Just finished eating some pork. It was pretty good. Some was good, some was not so good. Really good moisture though, and uh, good flavoring. Hi, I'm Gene here from Corpus Christi, and uh, I'm just having a wonderful time here eating some fab fabulous barbecue. It's really tough to judge because these are all high class winners just to start with, so it becomes a challenge. But there are a few standouts, and I'm looking forward to getting onto the brisket category. My name is Cliff Welch, and we are at the wonderful Jack Daniels Barbecue Contest, and I have just finished judging brisket, and out of our six samples, uh, there was a definite low, perhaps, in my humble opinion, and there were several definite highs. Uh, a couple of the teams uh, pulled off minor miracles. Uh, it was a pleasure to judge uh, this category at this event. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Jonathan Price, and I'm from Shelbyville, Tennessee, and I've just finished judging the brisket competition here at the Jack Daniels Barbecue Festival, and I'll tell you what, there was one on this plate that was just fantastic, way beyond the other six, but then you had two real close seconds, and uh, a couple of mediocres, and one that really just, uh, it didn't do much for me. But uh, overall, this has been a great event, and I have really enjoyed and hopefully I'll be invited back in the future. Thank you. How are you? I'm Matthew Hogan from Newcastle in Australia. I've just uh, done the brisket, and it was all very interesting. There was one that was particularly interesting, 
and um, we're here at the Jack, so everything's pretty interesting. Anyway, we'll catch us later. Yes, you have to. Yes, sir, what do you want? What? You didn't ask me a question. I gave you the question list. Who you are, where we are, what you ate. I'm Paul Kirk, known as Kansas City Baron of Barbecue. I'm from Kansas City. No, really? really? Honest Indian. Oh, that's politically incorrect. Honest Native American, excuse me. How many years did you serve on KCS board? I think 23. Overall, yeah. Did you learn anything about that? Yeah, don't go back. <laughs> Get away from them. Let, them. let these young pups have it. Okay. See anything else good today besides brisket? Brisket was okay. Uh, pork was so-so. Ribs were bad. Uh, chicken, was, chicken was very good, all of it. Uh, of course, the homeland, that's always, you know, fun to, fun to do because some of the stuff they come up with is outstanding. So, that would be it. Back again next year. Lord willing, in the creek don't rise. Just keep going, just start. Hi, I'm Maureen Petrosky. I'm author of The Cocktail Club. We're here at The Jack. This is my very first time judging. And today I ate so much, it's hard to remember, but I do feel that my belt is very tight at the end of all of it. Um, I did love the chef's choice, the homeland. That was really fun um, to see what they came up with. They were so completely different. One I thought was much more impressive than the other, um, that they're in the same category. It just shows the difference in talent that ranges here at the Jack. The barbecue was interesting. It was fun to go through and taste. There were some standouts, and all of it was fairly good. There was no real terrible. I know you thought the ribs were terrible. I didn't think they were terrible. Yeah, I thought she had to put up with me. Yeah, and I got to hang out with him the whole time that I was here. <laughs> but overall, it's been a great first experience, and if I can survive this and fit back in my plane seat on the way home, maybe I'll come back again next year. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jim. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. It's my ninth year here judging at the Jack. Always a good time, always the highlight of my year. We just got through judging desserts, and as always, we're out of this world. So thanks to everybody for having us, and thanks to uh, all the chefs and the cooks and all the teams out there. We appreciate the good times. Thank you. Well, thank you. Let me know when you're ready. We good? Hey, I am Joe. This is my second year judging the Jack. I come from Nashville, Tennessee. And if there was ever a reason to get diabetes, it would be this spread in front of me. The desserts are out of this world and really kind of hard to describe. There's just so many different elements to them. Like this appears to be a deconstructed pumpkin pie. And it's just phenomenal. So thanks for having us. This your way. Hi, this is Sue. Yes, well, it's hard to break away from eating, but I'm Susan, I've been here. Um, this is the 11th time I've had a chance to judge the Jack. It is one of the highlights of my year, and this year has been no exception. I can't tell you, um, we just had a wonderful spread of desserts, but this one, it's got a little Jack on it, and there's a pumpkin flavors, and oh, it was absolutely spectacular. They were all good, but we really were treated today, so we appreciate everything that the folks here do to uh, prepare this for us. This is a just a spectacular time. Awesome. Uh, my name is Nick Erickson. We just got done judging uh, dessert here. Uh, some really good entries we had. This is my fourth year judging the Jack. Beautiful day down here in the Hollow. Uh, can't think of a better way to finish it off with than, than with some sweet desserts.
Thank you. I'm Maury Jason. I'm from South Florida. Uh, we just finished judging the desserts here at the Jack. All the food has yeah. been exquisite today. Yeah, it's very, very difficult to pick a winner. One it seems to be better than the next. And we really finished it off wonderfully with the desserts. We really appreciate uh, all the folks at Brown Foreman and Jack Daniels for having us out here. Um, like I said, just a spectacular job from everybody. By the way, your individual results we will be available for one of the KCBS folks. Carolyn spearheading this, and they're going to be doing this right over here. All right. Charlie's 1 through 46. Mark is 47 through 92. Carolyn's everything above that. Right? Okay. Um, wow, what an event this has been. Again, give yourselves a huge round of applause. This has been certainly one of the best I've ever been associated with, and I've been here for all of them. We've got the ribbon. We have got this beautiful autographed PD guitar. We're going to leave this up here, but this is a genuinely beautiful instrument. Thanks to all of you from PB. We've also got a check for $10,000, maybe a little more importantly. Bragging rights for the title of world champion in the 2014 Jack Daniels World Invitational. Our winner is Iowa's Smoking Sure, go from there. Uh, do I just look at you or do I have to look at the lens? Yeah, okay. 
Hi, I'm Fred Davis, and I consider myself a pretty good uh, barbecue aficionado. And I'm a journalist as well as a professor. Uh, the two have uh, kind of run together for the last uh, 46 years, so I'm still growing, and uh, at some point I'm going to decide what I want to really do. <laughs> but uh, in terms of my interest in barbecue, it came uh, when I was a little boy, uh, juvenile uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, that uh, used to walk around with my dad, and he would take me around to the uh, barbecue pits in the community, and I didn't know anything about barbecue other than the fact it just smelled good. And I kind of took that interest from that point with uh, some other things. Uh, one of the most memorable things occurred uh, back in the early 1970s when I was a reporter in Flint, Michigan, Central Michigan. Uh, I was a frequent uh, 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 visitor to one of the restaurants, one of two four-star restaurants in the state of Michigan. And the owner uh, had heard that I was a pretty good uh, barbecue and things of this nature. I have to admit, at that point, it was still only working around the grill, but not getting into the real serious end of smoking and things of this nature. At any rate, he invited me to prepare for about 30 of his closest friends at his restaurant and the restaurant was closed to everybody else that particular time. Well, from an ethical standpoint, I had some problems with that because in journalism, whether it's broadcast journalism, which I was doing at the time, or newspaper, which uh, I've also been involved in, you can't do something and get compensated for it unless you're actually working for the company. So at any rate, I checked with the powers to be at the television station, I said, hey, um, uh, Chroma's restaurant, the one that I was talking about, I'm not sure if they're still in business, but they had been, had been around a long time, two, one of two four-star restaurants in the state. Chroma's restaurant wants me to do a barbecue for the owner and about 30 of his closest friends. And tell me what I need to do to make sure we are all on the same ethical page and things of this nature. Well, lo and behold, they said, this would be a great promotion for the station. One of his people, one of his anchor people and reporters out there doing that. I said, I hadn't thought about it in that respect, but yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. So at any rate, the long and short of that story is that I put my barbecue together and did it as best I know how. Everybody seemed to love it, and they loved it so much, the owner asked if I could allow him to put it on his menu, and they called it Fred Davis's Famous Spare Ribs. Now, listen, I, after that point, there was nothing else to, to strive for. <laughs> but at any rate, I, uh, I was very happy for the honor. It was some pretty good tasting uh, uh, barbecue. I had some other friends who worked with me during that time. It was a time where I was uh, using uh, bay leaves in my sauces and various spices to kind of uh, come up to the same level as the food. And I thought it was pretty good, too. Transition from that to 1992 in terms of the genesis of my getting started with the uh, Jack Daniels Barbecue International Festival. I was writing at the time for USA Today and I was not on staff but I was one of the frequent contributors for what they call editorial columns on the op-ed page. And there was a little blurb that said, if you think your barbecue palate is above average, write a, an essay and send it in and you will be um, told whether you have uh, won uh, that particular right to be a Jack Daniels barbecue judge. Well, essays are right down my alley because that's part of what I teach in uh, higher education. And about two weeks later, I got a letter from Pat Michimo, who at the time was the coordinator for the Jack Daniel judges, saying that uh, Fred, tag your it. Listen, I thought that that was probably the, 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 the highest uh, uh, compliment anybody could be paid by writing an essay and telling and trying to convince somebody that you knew something about barbecue, which I did, which I did. So I started out in uh, 1992, which as I recall was the third year of the Jack at that time. 
Uh, I don't know what happened the previous three years. Maybe they ran out of judges, but I don't know. They, they invited me to come, and it was a wonderful beginning uh, of a, uh, an experience that I've carried to date. At that time, uh, before the economy started going wild and things of this nature, uh, we would be the judges uh, picked up at the airport, I suppose to some extent that is, is still done, but picked up at the airport, would have a huge uh, uh, big dinner that Friday night, unlike uh, what's on the Barbecue Hill now, and that's great, but it would be just among the judges, not the cookers and the guests and everybody else. And so uh, we would have this big event on Friday night. Then the next morning uh, at Miss Bobo's house, we would have this huge breakfast. And listen, being a Southern boy, I said, no one is going to keep me away from the cheese grits and all the other things that you eat. And why would they schedule a huge breakfast when I got to spend four or five hours judging? Something is not going to add up. So I just had to moderate as I do with the tasting moderate my taste buds so that I wouldn't, as a part of the pun, pig out before I actually got to the judging event uh, that Saturday. So we did that on Saturday morning and that later evolved into uh, something else and I believe to this date there's not uh, an organized and orchestrated uh, gathering of the judges on Saturday morning but uh, it could be uh, on the part of judges who just want to get together. Then we uh, would, uh, on that Saturday night, after the big, big judging event, all head over to Shelbyville and uh, watch the Tennessee walking horses who are some of the most uh, beautiful specimens on the face of this earth. And that would be a big dinner. My naivety, naivete kind of set in initially. I said, how am I going to eat all this barbecue? How am I going to follow the big breakfast, breakfast on Saturday morning? and then go to a big dinner on Saturday night for more barbecue. Well, fortunately for Jack Daniels, it was something else other than barbecue, and I was very grateful to them for that. But it turned out to be a wonderful, wonderful exercise uh, that Saturday night. Then that Sunday morning, it wasn't as structured or organized, but we all got together as judges on the Sunday morning before we departed or were taken back to Nashville to uh, get on the plane and go our separate ways. So from the time I started in 19, uh, 1992 to uh, uh, about the next 10 or 15 years, uh, the judges were kind of uh, transported and treated beyond, uh, at least in my case, uh, the kind of royalty that, royalty that we were given. Uh, but I enjoyed it. It was uh, uh, consistent with uh, the kind of uh, uh, chores that you were asked to do in terms of judging and your reward was to be shown the appreciation which Jack Daniels does to this day of judging. So that's my story as they say in uh, 250 words or less and I'm sticking to 